Hello and welcome to the Heart Rhythm Center, where we're proud to offer a 100% online and 100% free ECG course. Whether you're a medical student, a healthcare professional, or just interested in learning more about ECGs, this course is for you. Our comprehensive course covers everything from basic ECG interpretation to more advanced topics, such as arrhythmias and cardiac pacing. And the best part, it's completely free. If you find this course valuable, please consider sharing this video, following us, giving us a positive evaluation, and even donating any amount you can using the link in the description below. Thank you for your support, and we hope you enjoy our 100% online and 100% free ECG course from the Heart Rhythm Center. Today's topic of discussion is ECG key concepts. The electrocardiogram, ECG or EKG, is a special graph that represents the electrical activity of the heart from one instant to the next. In this video, we will cover the essential cardiac electrophysiology and the basics of how the ECG machine works. The ECG provides a time voltage chart of the heartbeat. For many patients, this test is a key component of clinical diagnosis and management in both inpatient and outpatient settings. The device used to obtain and display the conventional ECG is called the electrocardiograph or ECG machine. It records cardiac electrical currents by means of conductive electrodes selectively positioned on the surface of the body. For the standard ECG recording, electrodes are placed on the arms, legs, and chest wall. The central function of the heart is to contract rhythmically and pump blood to the lungs for oxygenation and then to pump this oxygen-enriched blood into the general, systemic circulation. The signal for cardiac contraction is the spread of electrical currents through the heart muscle. These currents are produced both by pacemaker cells and specialized conduction tissue within the heart and by the working heart muscle itself. Pacemaker cells are like tiny clocks that repetitively generate electrical stimuli. The other heart cells, both specialized conduction tissue and working heart muscle, or like cables that transmit these electrical signals. Normally, the signal for heartbeat initiation starts in the sinus or sinoatrial SA node. This node is located in the right atrium near the opening of the superior vena cava. The SA node is a small collection of specialized cells capable of automatically generating an electrical stimulus, spark-like signal, and functions as the normal pacemaker of the heart. From the sinus node, this stimulus spreads first through the right atrium and then into the left atrium. Electrical stimulation of the right and left atria signals the atria to contract and pump blood simultaneously through the tricuspid and mitral valves into the right and left ventricles. The electrical stimulus then reaches specialized conduction tissues in the atrioventricular, a V-junction. The AV junction, which acts as an electrical relay connecting the atria and ventricles, is located at the base of the interatrial septum and extends into the interventricular septum. The upper proximal part of the AV junction is the AV node. The lower distal part of the AV junction is called the bundle of His. The bundle of His then divides into two main branches, the right bundle branch, which distributes the stimulus to the right ventricle, and the left bundle branch, which distributes the stimulus to the left ventricle. The electrical signal then spreads simultaneously down the left and right bundle branches into the ventricular myocardium, ventricular muscle, by way of specialized conducting cells called Purkinje fibers located in the subendocardial layer, inside rim of the ventricles. From the final branches of the Purkinje fibers, the electrical signal spreads through myocardial muscle toward the epicardium. The His bundle, its branches, and their subdivisions are collectively known as the His Purkinje system. Normally, the AV node and His Purkinje system form the only electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles. Disruption of conduction over these structures will produce a V heart block. The ECG is capable of recording only relatively large currents produced by the mass of working heart muscle. The much smaller amplitude signals generated by the sinus node and a V node are invisible with clinical recordings. Depolarization of the His bundle area can only be recorded from inside the heart during specialized cardiac electrophysiologic studies. So you know how certain cells in the heart act as pacemakers by generating electrical impulses. It's kind of like tiny clocks inside the heart. Normally the sinus node is the primary pacemaker, but sometimes other cells can act as backup pacemakers. This is actually a really important safety mechanism. 
because it ensures that the heart keeps beating even if something goes wrong with the primary pacemaker. However, sometimes these backup pacemakers can become too active and interfere with the primary pacemaker, which can lead to abnormal heart rhythms. This can be dangerous and may even be life-threatening in some cases. Another important property of the heart is conductivity. This is how quickly the electrical impulses move through different parts of the heart. This is important because it ensures that the heart beats in a coordinated way. When things go wrong with the heart's electrical system, it can lead to all sorts of problems, from dizziness and fainting to more serious issues like heart failure. But understanding how the heart normally works is the first step in understanding these problems and how to treat them. The electrocardiogram, or ECG, is a simple and inexpensive test that has been used in clinical practice for over a century. But why is it so clinically useful? Through careful clinical and experimental studies, we now know that the ECG provides essential diagnostic information for dangerous cardiac electrical disturbances related to conduction abnormalities in the AV junction and bundle branch system, as well as Brady and Takway arrhythmias. But the ECG doesn't just give us information about electrical function. It can also provide immediate clues about clinically important mechanical and metabolic problems, such as myocardial ischemia infarction, electrolyte disorders, and drug toxicity. Additionally, it can help diagnose hypertrophy and other types of chamber overload. In fact, the ECG can even help us forecast preventable catastrophes. For example, a very long QT, U pattern preceding sudden cardiac arrest due to torsades de pointis can be detected through an ECG. With all of these benefits, it's easy to see why the ECG is such a clinically useful tool. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. We hope that you found this 100% online and 100% free ECG course valuable and that it helps you advance your knowledge and skills in this important field. If you did find this course valuable, we kindly ask for your support. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. And if you're able to, please consider donating any amount you can using the link in the description below. Your support will help us continue to provide free, high-quality education to everyone who wants to learn. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you in our next lesson. Best wishes from the Heart Rhythm Center. Before we wrap up, we'd like to let you know that our next class will cover the basics of ECG, including waves, intervals, and segments. This is an essential foundation for interpreting ECGs, and we're excited to delve deeper into this topic with you. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss our next lesson. Once again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you soon in our next 100% online and 100% free ECG course from the Heart Rhythm Center.